So last week I got a chance to sit with David Andrade from Theory Animation. David used to work in the visual effects industry, uh, mainly at Rhythm and Hues, before he started his own animation studio. We talked a little bit about how he started that studio using only Blender. So let's jump in. So uh, I'm talking to David with Theory Animation, uh, theoryanimation.com and also maketheory.com, right? Two websites for, uh, for the company. And David uh, used to work in the animation visual effects industry and then decided to start your own uh, 3D animation studio using uh, mostly Blender, right? Yep. So do you want to tell me a little bit about why you chose to go with Blender and how, how is that integrated into your pipeline? Sure. We, we were a startup and uh, we, we've used Maya before and there's nothing wrong with Maya. Um, but we needed a way to quickly get up to speed and not spend thousands upon thousands on licenses. So we looked at Blender as a solution and we were hesitant at first. But honestly, once we really got into it, we saw that it really had most of what we needed, feature-wise, quality-wise, tools-wise. Uh, and then what was missing, the community was there to help us out. And the community had some amazing add-ons and a ton of great support. That, And in the beginning, we had no idea that any of this really existed. We just went with it because it was for free. But once we really got into it, man... Uh, absolutely love it, and so now we're stuck with it because we, <laughs> you know, we've built our whole pipeline through it, and and, uh, and the artists are are working pretty well with it. Right, because Blender is very uh, community focused. It's a free software, and it's uh, developed by the community. You got it. You know, uh, we submit bug reports every couple of months now, and they'll come back done al- almost within a day. You really? know that turnaround time. Yeah, that turnaround time compare it to say like Maya, uh, especially if you're a big company, I'm sure, you know, you can have a direct line, but uh, for us, you know, small company of only a couple of people, it's really difficult to say, hey, there's this problem, can any anyone? Uh, but hmm. Blender, you know, we'll submit a bug report and, and they'll be there, they'll be there and they'll help us out and they'll, they'll give us a, a bug fix or at least an idea of what to do uh, from that point on. So, so what are the main differences you found after working with, with software like Maya for a few years and then like transitioning into a, a whole different different pipeline. Yeah. The best part about Maya is that when they have a lot of really good and great technology, they're they're really solid about implementing it. Um, and then they'll implement some of the latest stuff, some of the latest and greatest stuff, uh, but it breaks or it crashes, or sometimes it's very limited in what they support. Whereas like in Blender, uh, one of the big things that they do is they implement stuff as uh, soon as they can get it to work solidly. Like nothing ever really gets into trunk unless it's pretty solid or it's not going to crash on most systems. You see, Blender has to work across so many different devices right. that they really run through a lot of testing to make sure it's, it's out there. But the best part is every two months there's a new version and they're iterating constantly so if you want p-text you know disney made p-text it's really cool way of painting textures on 3d models disney made that open source about a year and a half ago and everybody kind of rushed in to get it supported but it was really buggy and now p-text is coming to blender might even be out by the time this video is done so when we transitioned from Maya to Blender, we initially thought that, crap, we have all of these tools that we use in Maya. Um, it has some amazing stuff like Viewport 2.0 and tons and tons of plugins and things everywhere. And we thought, you know, Blender comparatively is maybe a 100 megabyte download, whereas Maya is in the few gigs. And we thought, we're going to lose so much. But at the end of the day, um, Blender has a combination of a ton of add-ons that are built by the community and a ton of amazing stuff that's already built into Blender. So really, we, we haven't needed to create new add-ons or scripts or anything from stuff that we missed about Maya. In fact, at this point, we're actually just iterating on top of what Blender has given us because the tools have been amazing. Let me give you a perfect example. There is a silhouette tool in Blender. It's a button. And actually, what it turned out to be is this crazy combination of clicks that you had to do in Blender to see things in black and white with mm-hmm. gradations. You For know, posing. Camera. Right. And someone built a button to do that. 
someone built a button just to do that specific process and to switch back from normal view to the silhouette view. Now, in Maya, you know, in Maya you had to hide stuff and then you had to do, you know, turn stuff to not shaded and then you had to like, you know, view with no light yeah. selected. Like there was, I'm not saying that someone couldn't have written a button or a script to do that, but it's just not in their interest. Yeah. There's more do people that. doing it for Blender. You're saying like more people interested in developing these quick little add-ons and releasing them for free. Right. You know, and, and there's a healthy mix of paid add-ons versus free add-ons. The paid ones will do some amazing stuff, like Key Light Pro will give you some amazing lighting tools that you can use mm -hmm. if you want to get professional, like really high-definition promo renders. Yeah. Couldn't recommend it anymore. Um, but on the other side, there is, you know, these free little add-ons really quick, like the Silhouette tool. Easy. One click. Perfect. You know, and, and that's the best part about the community is they're constantly contributing and, and trying to enrich the program. Yeah. All right. What, what about the, the performance differences? Like the, not the software performance, but the results of the actual renders. One of the things that uh, we'd love is Cycles. That's the super duper render that they have now. That's the new GPUs. engine they came out with recently. Correct. Yeah. And the GPU rendering, if you have a, a decent gaming card, fantastic. Really, really happy with it. It's great for uh, small studios. It's great for hobbyists and freelancers, professionals, and people who are just interested in learning. You know, you, you, most machines come with a pretty decent NVIDIA graphics card these days. It's a click of a button. Right. And, and you're going to get some really beautiful stuff. Now, if you want something that simulates like the movie Gravity, uh, you're going to need an old render or something really high depth to do all of those amazing precise calculations. Um, and you actually have plugins to interface between blends and things like V-Ray. And I believe there's even an Arnold one. But in terms of performance, you're going to get most of anybody out here is going to get most of what they need. Once you start hitting like Lord of the Rings, Hobbit kind of right. quality stuff, all those people use custom stuff anyways. It's based mm -hmm. off of a rent man or an Yeah, Arnold. I mean, if you can use V-Ray and Arnold, that's, that's pretty much what most, I think, people use in Maya. Maybe not the big studios, mm -hmm. but most medium to small size studios and individuals would use anyway. Right. You know, I mean, Pacific Rim was rendered in Arnold, and it came out pretty <laughs> awesome. Oh, you it know? did? Uh, yeah, so th cool. those kinds of things exist. You know, it's not the mm -hmm. end of the day uh, if, if you can't support that. But here's the best thing is that Cycles gives you 80% of that out of the box, one button, you know. And unless you're building Pacific Rim at home, you mm -hmm. know, you, you're going to get a lot out of this stuff already. Yeah, and even the, the regular, the default render is pretty good. I've I played with that a little bit for the course I was building. And I got, like, really nice results with very few... Like, or a few options. It's very fast, you know. Yeah, That's the beauty of fast. it. It's very fast. And then you have something called uh, Freestyle that you can attach to it, which lets you do non-photorealistic rendering. And super cool, super awesome. Takes a couple of clicks to get set up, but mm -hmm. yeah, default render is great. Uh, just Cycles get, gets you a little more things like subsurface scattering, which is pretty big for us. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about how, like, what's your pipeline? How do you use Blender in your own pipeline? Like, what do you guys do in Theory Animation? How, how do you use Blender? Yeah. Our studio is really much idea and artist driven. So anyone really within the team can propose an idea and say, I got this thing I want to do for a short. So once we kind of get that into the mix, usually it takes one or two people to go in and storyboard it and lay it out. Now, we used to do storyboards like anybody, really. You'd draw them on, on sketchbooks or you'll draw them in Photoshop. But Blender, just recently, and I'm talking February time period of 2015 now, Blender just released an amazing grease pencil update that basically lets you do all the storyboarding in Blender. And the best part, with if you're pretty ingenious, you can do three-dimensional storyboarding, so you can actually draw you know, actual cubes with this grease pencil. Basic shading and everything, but ju it's just what you need to do mm -hmm. quick storyboarding. Yeah, I've and, seen people uh, do like, an, like actual 2D animation with the grease pencil. 
And it's amazing, you yeah. know, like out of the box, I can do some quick animating, some quick like ideas of how it all is. And, you know, so anyway, what I'm trying to say to go back to your question is we're using the grease pencil now to block out ideas. So you're and doing then everything's of, in Blender from the first, like from the first second of right. production. Um, right, right, right. You know, That's so cool. from... So when, when we're starting out, you know, the video sequence editor is there for audio, throwing in and cutting up and getting some ideas all the way to, like, grease pencil and laying out the cameras and, of course, animating and rendering. You know, the, the bulk of that production happens in Blender. So once we get all the layouts done in Blender and we get the animation and the production all done in Blender, of course, you know, we render it. Uh, and rendering is a bit of a process. We play with lights. We throw in things. We have a couple of nodes that we throw in to really enrich the look. Uh, and, and that gives us a great thing right, right out of the box. And we could stop there, but we don't. Uh, we actually render out to EXR files, 10-bit EXR files, because we find that they have the most latitude for the best uh, space. From, we take those files into three places. Uh, we take them into Adobe After Effects. Uh, we take them into Premiere. And once in a while, we even take them into Speed Grade. Uh, the point of all of this is that we take it in there and we really push the color and we really push the look. And uh, once in a while, there's some effects that we really, really want. And maybe we want to make it feel more dreamy. So we kind of blow everything out and, and really, you know, uh, gloss over it and have nice blur to it. Um, maybe want it, we want it to feel a bit more moody once we watch it in the edit. So we drop the reds and push the blues. So it has kind of like this, you know, emotional beat to it. That stuff we do in post. So we, we do that in After Effects, Speed Grade, and then once we do that, we throw all of that into Premiere for final editing. Uh, and this isn't a commentary on, on Blender. I'm not saying that it's not capable of doing this, because it is. It does have a color correcting tool. It does have a great editing tool. And there's even a whole script to manage editing. There's like a whole editing suite add-on for Blender. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just we're a little bit more familiar with we are a little bit more familiar with Adobe stuff. Right. So we, we like the latitude that it gives us. We like some of the tools and plugins that we have for Creative Cloud and for After Effects. So we do a lot of work in there to, to really just finesse it and polish it. And of course, from there, we can export to, to anything. And, um, you know, web MP4s are easy, but. You know, then you got to export DCP when you want to send it to a film festival or DNX if you want to send it to another film festival. Yeah, so we, we kind of need that latitude. In, um, and Blender doesn't have that just yet, but Premiere does, and that's mostly because they pay for all these licenses for these fancy plugins. Mm -hmm. So we, we do our final, final stuff in Premiere and After Effects and once in a while Speed Grade. And audio, if you're curious, audio is done mostly in Audition. We do all of our audio chopping, recording, and pulling and pushing the levels all in Audition, yeah, which is another. That's what I use too. Yeah, yeah. it's great. Uh, what about the tools that you're you're creating in the Make Theory part of your of your studio when you you're creating tools yep. and that you're using yourself, right? Yeah, so it's really easy to do the production part. the The hard part is working together, right? So we have people all over who contribute. There's three main people who do most of the heavy lifting, but we have a ton of animators who come in and help us out, do a shot or two. Some of them do quite a few shots free time volunteering their time to, to make a short. And with that, we needed a way for everyone to kind of work together. So we looked at what's out there, and they're either overly complex or too expensive to use. So we built our own really simple, easy-to-use, artist-driven tool called Make Theory. Now, I know that probably doesn't make sense, like what a pipeline and all that is. Mm -hmm. But basically... It's an easy way for you to talk to a person who is in another state or maybe in another country. It's an easy way for you to talk to each other, know what each other is working on, and collaborate together to get a project done. So and you'd like, be talk surprised. to each other within Blender in a way, right? Like managing the, the Blender files over different places? Right. Yeah. yeah. For example, we have a tool called Sync, that uh, Make Theory Sync, that allows two different users or in our case, 25 different users to all have the same master work files. 
And that's really important because if you're working on something and this person's working on a character that's in that scene, uh, you need to make sure that you're always up to date with the latest. And FTP can be kind of messy. Dropbox can send you too many files or blow your bandwidth limit. But the tool that we built is a, a one button click to make sure that you're both working on the right thing at the right time. You know, so that's the big thing. And then the other one is Make Theory Task. And what Make Theory Task lets you do is see who's working on what. So it's kind of like a producer overview of, okay, half of this project's done, half of it is not done, and I can see what's going on, who needs to be assigned what. And when you're working on something with other people, it's an, it, it can get hectic. So we try to simplify that whole process. And the last bit, the last thing that we, we do is we've partnered with another studio called SyncSketch, and we have this tool that allows you to do drawovers in real time. So again, if you're just in a different home, if you're in a different country, in a different state, different continent, you hit a button and both of you are watching the same MP4 file, video file, whatever, at the same time through Google Chrome or Firefox. You're watching it at the same time and either of you can critique it at the same time. You can do drawovers, you can hold frames, you can leave comments, and anyone else can join that session. So it's not just you and somebody else. You can have up to like 50 people in there all critiquing, showing, and going over the same shot. And it's really helpful when you're working together because it's really easy when you're in an office to turn around and point to something. But you can't do that when you're over Skype, right? So we yeah. built this tool with this other company to let you do that over the internet, if you will. Yeah. So that's, and that, in the cool. set, all of those tools together are called Make Theory. And can people like get it from MakeTheory.com if they want to yes. use some of them? That's cool. Yeah, you, if anyone's interested, sorry, they go can ahead. just sign up. Oh, okay. A little laggy. Yeah, if anybody's interested, they can sign up at MakeTheory.com and get a demo, a 30-day demo, play with the tools, see if it's right. right for them. And and from there, then we can talk about a subscription package for your team or just yourself, whatever. So we've been doing this for about two years now. Um, some of us came from Rhythm and Hughes after it exploded. And before then, we've actually been making shorts for almost five years. We, we made a whole bunch of little shorts, and we built this pipeline before any of us met at Rhythm. Uh, and since Rhythm, we've been really refining the pipeline and really refining our shorts. Yeah. So, and, and all of that using Blender before, your, before you started the studio? Blender and Maya. You know, we okay. were, were never against Maya. Um, just using Blender mostly because, like I said, it's free. It's an right. easy. It's, and, it's pretty easy to buy a free software. And you've been producing an animated uh, web series with with that in the past two years. Yes, we have. Uh, it's called Rain Clovis. Uh, Ray is a really low energy, chill iguana who plays the guitar, and <laughs> Clovis is a really high energy, low maturity, pain in the ass cat who. Uh, frustrates Ray daily with his mischief and bad joke telling and once in a while summons a monster to torment them. So that's our show, Ray and Clovis. <laughs> yeah. All right, great. Thanks for uh, spending some time with me talking about Blender. And, yeah, man. Uh, and people can find you at theoryanimation.com and your YouTube channel, youtube.com slash theoryanimation. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then finally, actually, no, shoot. I think it's Theory Vision TV, which is really stupid. Okay. Yeah, it's youtube.com slash Theory Vision TV. Okay. I'll put the link in the show notes anyway, so they can just click and uh, subscribe through there. Cool. And, um, then, uh, and then make theory.com for tools if you want a way to work together with friends. All right, great. Well, thanks cool. for, thanks for uh, sharing that. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. All right, talk to you later.